the fact that uh, she argued successfully the landmark school voucher case, that play a role in the Well, I mean, it was all of the work. It was the, uh, the, the legal writings. I'm not a lawyer. Um, how about a round of applause? Um, <laughs> I'm not a lawyer, so I trust uh, my counsel, Mike Roadhouse. Um, I, I trust Diane Bry. I mean, these are two really smart, qualified people. And they had a look at the compendium of information. I didn't sit down and study all this, Jim. I just didn't. I get a recommendation from people who, who I empower, and they understand what I want. I mean, we sit down, we talk about it, and it, they, they come in the first thing and said, what do you want? I just laugh. I mean, what, what do you mean, what do I want? And somebody's got good values, somebody that can do the job, and somebody who's highly intelligent, and somebody who'll be independent, not be bullied by the crowd on the court. And uh, so they came back, and, uh, but that's a good thing. I think it's great. It shows her experience in arguing vouchers. But it's also the fact that she's been an independent and excellent appeals court judge. And her, uh, the, whole, the whole compendium of information is what, uh, is what is compelling. And I have to tell you honestly, I like picking a woman. I just like it, okay? I mean, I, I think that um, I love to have that point of view on that court. Um, that was an influence, but it, that wasn't the call. There was no one single thing. It was a whole accumulation of looking at all of this. Were you given a choice or it was just... Uh, well, they come and they kind of discuss certain people with me who made the second cut. Okay. And then I, I took them under consideration. I mean, they didn't give me any pieces of paper or anything. But, you know, we talked about people, and it just became, and it was one meeting. I mean, it wasn't, and then I wanted to meet her to make sure that we, we could get along. And then I, then I told her that she was going to be judged, but she couldn't tell her husband because he would leak. And, uh, and then I felt guilty, so did you know? I'm sworn to secrecy. Come on over here. Let me come over here, huh? This is a great day. What do, you, what do you have to say about your mom? I'm really proud of my mom. I must have wanted it in a really long time. And I'm happy to see her. Happy. And what do you do? I'm a student at Ohio State. I'm a senior. And what are you going to be? Um, I'm a criminology major. Okay. So I'm something in. Good. Something related to all this. Yeah. Your mother and father both inspired you. Yeah. Your father is a, uh, what, what is, he's a solicitor? Mm -hmm. Magistrate. Same so, man. Okay. <laughs> all right. So, uh, th there was no one, one, one thing. Who, uh, can you say who lobbied for a particular candidate? I had, like, somebody talk to me at a Christmas party, and then I had somebody else, you know, talk to me. But I, I just made it clear to them, because I know it's hard for people to believe that I'm not putting my thumb on that scale. And I just said, look, I, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to get into the name. Does Attorney General DeWine argue for his, or lobby you for his son? Well, you know, he wanted, he advocated um, uh, for his son. He, he believes in his son, he loves his son, and his son is extremely talented. And he's also very young, and he's new on this court. Uh, I would not be surprised uh, to see Pat DeWine on the Ohio Supreme Court. Uh, it just didn't happen this time, and you know the process was such. And you know, uh, I think Professor Adler is somebody worth talking to on this. They just rank these candidates in their own minds on the basis of you know the first interview, the cut, the second interview, looking at the breadth of their work, and and that's how they did it. And I I, I think well, I mean I said to the professor. What do you tell your colleagues now back at school? He said, well, they probably still won't believe me, but the process was very fair and open. How many uh, candidates made the second cut? I don't know. Do you know? Three. Three. Okay. How did, you're supposed to say you don't know. <laughs> but you knew that. That's good. You tell the truth. I don't really know. Uh, Mike, anything you want to say about this, Counselor? About, uh, you know, kind of more, a little bit more in detail about how the process worked? No, sure. <clears throat> Uh, good morning again. I'm Mike Roadhouse. I'm the governor's chief counsel. Um, I think Judge French would probably agree that it was a very rigorous process. As yes. the governor said, there were 13 uh, applicants. We had the uh, seven lawyers outside the governor's office that uh, uh, helped us vet the candidates. They were given a copy of each candidate's application plus the attached materials. Uh, there were four of us in the governor's office who participated as well. We had an hour-long interview with each of the each of the 13 applicants. Um, the interviews were challenging. I think you would agree. 
a lot of questions about constitutional law and legal theory and judicial philosophy. Um, after those 13 interviews were done over a period of two, two full days, uh, I think the, the 11 of us reached a consensus that there was a smaller group that was worthy of further evaluation, which is exactly what we did. We went and uh, took a deeper look at uh, some of the judges' uh, cases and things that she had worked on as well as the other two individuals and we eventually uh, got back together with our group of seven advisors and we hashed it out and we ended up taking three names to the governor and uh, we met with him and discussed the merits of each candidate and he selected Judge French. So who are, who are the other three? I don't, I don't we're not, not going to say at this point. We don't need to talk about that. Well, Question. you know, we, we think there were a number of them that were really, really qualified and, um, you know, it's just there's only one spot here, but there could have been other picks that would have been really good, but, you know, my gut, my sense, this was the, um, the best one. Question for the judge. Uh, when you look back on your, your judicial history to this point, can you give us a brief comment on what the <coughs> challenge was or what the most difficult case was or what your high point or low points were? Well, certainly in my, in my legal career, arguing before the U.S. Supreme Court, you know, it really doesn't get any bigger than that for a lawyer. Um, at the 10th District, we've heard lots and lots of really important constitutional cases. So I've had a number of cases that relate to important issues like elections. Um, I, I had to rule on the case involving Jim O'Brien versus Ohio State. So that was, that was one for the public eye. But I feel very well prepared for the Supreme Court. We hear a lot of the same cases that they would hear. And so I feel very well prepared for my time on the 10th District. So from a woman's perspective, what comments do you have or advice do you have for other young uh, ladies in Ohio that want to pursue a career in law? Or? There, are just, there are no barriers. It would, it would be the same for a man or a woman. There are no, there are no um, barriers. You know, we've got so many wonderful role models, both on the, on the Ohio Supreme Court and, and women. You know, we've got a lieutenant governor who's a woman. They're, they're just, I, I never saw any barriers in front of me. And I, I don't think my daughter sees any barriers in front of her. 